Once upon a time, in a land far away, there lived a nameless monster. The monster was dying to have a name. So the monster made up his mind and set out on a journey to look for one. But the world was such a very large place, the monster split in two and went on separate journeys. One went east, the other headed west. The one who went east came upon a village. There was a blacksmith who lived at the village's entrance. Mr. Blacksmith, please give me your name, said the monster. I can't give you my name, replied the blacksmith. If you give me your name, I'll go inside you and make you strong, said the monster. Really? said the blacksmith. If you make me stronger, I'll give you my name. The monster went into the blacksmith. And so, the monster became Otto the blacksmith. Otto was the strongest man in town. But then one day he said, Look at me, look at me. The monster inside of me is getting bigger. Munch, munch, chomp, chomp, gobble, gobble, gulp. The hungry monster ate up Otto from the inside out. Once again, he was a monster without a name. Next, he went into Hans, the shoemaker. However, munch, munch, chomp, chomp, gobble, gobble, gulp. Once again, he went back to being a monster without a name. Then he became Thomas the hunter, but soon, munch, munch, chomp, chomp, gobble, gobble, gulp. Back he went to being a monster without a name. The monster next went to a castle to look for a nice name. He came upon a very sick boy who lived in that castle. If you give me your name, I'll make you strong, said the monster. The boy replied, if you can make me healthy and strong, I will give you my name. So the monster jumped right into the boy. And the boy became full of vigor. The king was overjoyed. He announced, The prince is healthy. The prince is strong. The monster became quite fond of the boy's name. He was also quite pleased with his royal life in the castle. So he controlled himself no matter how ravenous his appetite became. Day after day, despite his growing hunger, the monster stayed put inside the boy. But finally, the hunger just became too great. Look at me, look at me, said the boy. The monster inside of me has gotten this big. The boy devoured the king and all his servants. Munch, munch, chomp, chomp, gobble, gobble, gulp. The castle was lonely now with everyone gone, so the boy left on a journey. He walked and walked for days. And then one day, the boy came upon the monster who had gone west. I have a name, said the boy, and it's such a wonderful one at that. But the monster who went west replied, Who needs a name? I'm perfectly happy without one. After all, that's what we are, nameless monsters. The boy ate up the monster who went west. At last he had found a name, but there was no longer anyone to call him by it. Such a shame, because Johan, 
was such a wonderful name. I've been watching you. I wanted to devour you whole. But instead, everything about you consumed me. When I was falling apart, how did I look to you? When I was falling apart, the object you gave me, you left me a beautiful jewel. Those twins who look as if they are blessed with eternal life. The most sinful deed is to take away a person's name. Let's get your name back. I'll give you your name back. Your name is Anna. Right now, I'm sad. 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 Let's make a deal. Let's make a deal, said the demon. No, not at all, said the man with the big eyes. Sure, let's make a deal, said the man with the big mouth. The man with the big mouth grew a beautiful garden. The man with the big eyes was very hungry because he was very poor. The man with the big mouth had fun every day. The man with the big mouth was very full from eating the fruit from his garden. So he didn't realize what was happening. He didn't realize that his garden was drying up. By the time he noticed, it was too late. The man with the big mouth cried and cried in the garden that never grew again. I shouldn't have made a deal with the demon. The man with the big eyes was dying from hunger. Tears were trickling down from his big eyes as he cried. I should have made a deal with the demon. Let's make a deal. Let's make a deal, said the demon. The man with the big eyes, the man with the big mouth. The God of Peace was very busy. He was so busy playing the trumpet he didn't have time to look in the mirror. The trumpet that the God of Peace played made everyone very happy. The God of Peace was so busy, he was so busy pouring the mysterious water, he didn't have time to look in the mirror. The mysterious water created green mountains, ripened the fields and created flower gardens. The God of Peace was very busy. He was so busy naming people, he didn't have time to look in the mirror. Your name is Otto. Your name is Hans. Your name is Thomas. Your name is Johan. Johan gave the God his hat in appreciation. The god was very happy. He put the hat on and looked in the mirror for the first time. But what he saw was a demon. The demon inside the mirror said, You are me and I am you. What should I do? No one can live happily with the demon here. What should I do? What should I do? Then the troubled god A thief sneaks into a quiet village in the mountains. He plans to make off with a good sum of money from the villagers. But as he interacts with the people of the village, he forgets how to steal. And eventually he ends up leading a quiet life, helping the village folks. The title is The Peaceful House. The Awakening Monster by Herman Fur. There was a gigantic rock that blocked a cave. It was said that a monster sleeps in the cave. That was the spoken legend. It was said that the person who wakes the monster will possess everything in the world. In the village, there was a most unfortunate youth 
who cannot help but wish for everything in the world. The youth asked an old villager, what should one do to awake the monster? The old man spoke, with the name of the person most loved in the world, call out to the monster. Around that time, there was a wedding in the village. Everyone seemed to be having fun singing and dancing. The youth thought, as he saw the bride and groom, I know the name of the person most loved in the world. The youth shouted at the cave the names of the bride and the groom. Majenka! Pepe Jacou! But the monster did not wake up. Well loved was the strongest man in the village. The youth thought, I know the name of the person most loved in the world. The youth shouted out at the cave the man's name. Ijiku! The monster did not wake up. There was a person who was most proud of her voice in the village. Everyone listens to her beautiful voice in ecstasy. The youth thought, I know the name of the person most loved in the world. The youth shouted out at the cave the name of the person. Mararanka! The monster did not wake up. There was a granny and a grandpa who were married for a long, long time. Many children they had and many grandchildren. The youth thought, I know the name of the person most loved in the world. So he shouted at the cave. Bojenka, Vonosheku! The monster did not wake up. The youth saw many people who were well loved. Feeling as though he possesses everything in the world, he has forgotten all about going back to the cave. However, one day at the outskirts of the village, he met a woman who was crying. My child is missing. My child has mysteriously disappeared. While crying, the woman spoke of how she loved her child. Lastly, the child's name reached the youth's ears. The youth was surprised, and he thought, I know the name of the person most loved in the world. The youth hurried to the cave. The name of the woman's child is the same as mine. The name of the person most loved in the world is the same as mine. Facing the cave, the youth shouted out in a loud voice his name. The rock slowly moved. At the instant the youth saw the monster, munch munch, chomp chomp, gobble gobble, gulp. The name of the youth was 